just our quick, simple one. We've got a homozygous polled cow. So what does homo mean again? Same. Same. So we can pick whatever letter we want. Let's use H. So he can be H, big H, big H, or little H, little H. Does everybody understand where we got that? Homozygous polled cow. Is crossed with a homozygous horned cow. So what's homozygous mean here? Oh, it's still same. Homo and homo still mean same, so we really don't know what kind of, of homozygous. But we've got a polled cow and a horned cow, and it produces all polled offspring. They're all polled. So what does that tell us about the polled trait? What is it probably in terms of dominant or recessive? It's dominant. It's, it's dominant. So the polled cow is going to be homozygous dominant. The horned cow is going to be homozygous recessive. Give me a thumb if you understand how we got that information. I see it. Huh? Okay. Again, it gave us all pulled offspring, which means for whatever reason, this is going to be dominant because everybody had it. Okay, so we know that polled offspring up here is going to be homozygous dominant. So our next step is to fill in our parents. Does it matter who goes on top and who goes on the bottom? No. It does not. So you could put your big H's down the side and your littles at the top. It doesn't matter as long as they stay together. Okay. Some, if you know where, we're, if you're good to go so far. We're good to go. So does anybody know our next step? What do we do? Somebody tell me. Fill in the boxes. Fill in the boxes. And it's a lot like one of those multiplication tables you use in like third grade. Okay, so we're gonna go here and here. So what letter goes first, big or little? Big. Big, big. good job. Okay, and somebody tell me what this box is gonna be here. Big H, little H. What about here? Good. What about here? Good. Everybody understand how we did that? We're feeling good? Okay, let's try the next one just for fun. Okay, try and do that one on your own and then we'll talk about it.
30 more seconds. Let's work this one out. So it says two horses are bred. One is homozygous for curly hair and the other is heterozygous for smooth hair. We can use H again. Where do we start? What's the easiest place to start? Well, obviously the parents, but the heterozygous one. Okay, so if we use H, we know he has to be big little because remember hetero means different. That's in your foldable. So we know he's heterozygous. Then the curly haired one is homozygous, which means what? Same. So he could be big H, big H, or, oh, oops, little H, little H. How do we know in this problem? How do we know? Don't overthink it. Riley. Okay, we already have smooth hair as being dominant as a heterozygous trait. Can we have two dominant traits? Uh-uh. We can only have one. If you've got a heterozygous, your other one is either, well, you have no choice. It's going to be homozygous recessive every time. Give me a thumb if you understand where we got that because that's going to be important. All right, so let's fill her in. Doesn't matter where I put my parents. Somebody tell me what this box is. Good. This one? Good. This one? What about this one? Good. Now how do we feel? Good? I need more practice. Good? I need more practice. Good? I need more practice. Okay. So I want you to go ahead and drag out your foldables. And as soon as you've done that, come get one of these sheets right up here. get them checked. Work through one through five and then come see Mrs. Blake Ride to get them checked. so fast. Nice. 
not even done making my tea. <laughs> working on one through five, that's more than okay. If you've got one through five checked, you are working on six through ten. And patiently wait.
Still working. Okay, finish whatever one you're on, and then we're going to take this a step further. So I want you to go back to the first one we worked on. Okay, remember that the pulled off spring is, is homozygous dominant, so we've got big H, big H, and then this guy is little h, little h. We're good here. Thumbs up. Yes or no? I need like a hard. Yes. I figured out where you got that information. Let's rock. Perk. So now we need to come up with the genotypes and the phenotypes. So genotypes are easiest to do first because all it is is what? What are the genotypes? Just the letters. Okay. And we can assign whatever letter we want. And I like to think of it like a grocery list or a, a check sheet. So I start here. Okay, well I have a big H, little h. And there are two of them. So I put a check here and a check here because I've counted them. Okay, I have a quick question. It's homozygous dominant, right? You wrote H, H under there. Big H, big H. Oh, oh man. Good comments this late. I said I went to the whole thing wrong. Okay. And then. Big, big, big. Big six. No big six. Does that look better? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we still have big H, little h. But how many do I have? Four. And then we always do a ratio out of something. So out of the whole number. How many boxes do I have total? Four. So for right now, all of your ratios are going to be out of four. Everybody understand how we got there? I need a head nod or a thumb or something. Yes. All right, so then for phenotypes is our next step. And what are the phenotypes? The physical trait. So again, I just need to look up here. I know it's heterozygous. So what is the trait for heterozygous? Oof, toughy. Is it horned or pulled? Pulled. So we write these out like this. I have a heterozygous pulled cow. And how many of them are there? Four out of four. four. 
How do we feel? You want to try the next one? Okay, let's try it. Two horses. One's eyes for curly hair. The other's head is eyes for smooth. So what's gonna be what? What's this guy? The curly haired guy. Um, Ooh, not big H, little H. Little H, little H. Or homeless eye gets recessive. Remember, homeless eye because it's the same recessive. It's small. What's header header is What's he gonna be? Big H, little H. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure I do this one right this time. Everybody understand where we got that? Mm -hmm. Step one is complete. Yes, thumb or nod of the head, something. All right, now what's our next step? Uh, the genotypes. Okay, the genotypes are easiest because they're right here in front of us. So I start my grocery list. I have big H, little h. And how many of them are there? Two. Two. Out of how many? Four. So I do two out of four. What else do I have? How many of them do I have? When in doubt, what should these two numbers equal up to? Four. Two plus two equals? So are we ready to move? Yeah. Do we understand how we found genotypes? Yes, sir. And a head nod or a thumb. Okay, so what's next? And phenotypes are the what? So, go back up to my grocery list. I have a heterozygous, two out of four, and a homozygous recessive, two out of four. It is just like making a list. That is all you are doing. There's no paragraph writing, none of that. Okay, so, how would I talk about this guy here? What is he? So we start with heterozygous, homozygous dominant, or homozygous recessive. What is he? Heterozygous. Nope, not heterozygous dominant, just heterozygous. Heterozygous, and what does that mean over here? What type of hair does a heterozygous animal have? How many do I have? Two out of four. four. So, got that one done. The next one, how do I write this guy out? He's homozygous because it's the same, and then recessive because he's small. And what does homozygous recessive mean in this problem? Curly hair. Curly hair. And how many do I have? Two. Two out of four. And now I'm done. Whew. How do we feel now? Like. Give me a hundred of these, I'm good, or let's practice some more. Okay, so now what I want you to do, starting with 11, you're gonna do this for every sheet. Okay, so let's do 11 together. And we're gonna totally make up characteristics to go with these. Totally make it up. 
So, 11 is, ooh, a backwards one. Tricky. So they give us big B here, big B, little B, and then they give us this one. So that's what's given. So how do we fill this in first? What do we have to figure out? Tyler. We gotta figure out what goes up up here. So how do we do that? Yeah. Okay, so I get my big B or my little B from here. Everybody see that? So this box has to be what? Big B. Big B. Can you fill out the rest? Do it. How do we feel? Ready to move on? All right, what do we do first? We have to do our genotype. So it's like making a grocery list. What do I have? I have big B, big B. Somebody else tell me how many. Out of? Okay, so check and check. What else do I have? Good. How many? Out of? Good. Do we understand here? Okay, so we can do something easy like, uh, let's do, almost like it's dominant is going to be brown hair. And anything that's recessive is blonde. We'll just use this for the rest of the worksheet. Those are going to be your phenotypes. Okay, so I'd write that up top or onto the side somewhere. For the rest of the sheet, those are going to be your phenotypes. So, big B, big B. How do I write it out? What do I say in terms of phenotypes? It is dominant, but what has to come before dominant? Homozygous. Why homozygous? Somebody tell me. Because it's the same. It's the same. So I've got the actual letters labeled, but what characteristic comes next? Brittany, tell me. If it's homozygous dominant, what color hair is this? Brown. And how many do I have? How many do I have? I know Faith's got it. How many do I have? Thank you. I think that was Gavin. All right, what else is on my list? How do we say big B, little B? Somebody other than Faith. Lily. Heterozygous. Because hetero means what? And then what is the characteristic going to be? Michael, try it. Ooh, not blonde. I have to have two <coughs> recessives. Remember, they're weak. A little way to remember this is if you have, like, say, a, a big P, that's the dominant. But you have to stack two P's on top of each other to overpower the dominant one. So we have to have two recessive alleles for that trait to show. So what characteristic is going to be heterozygous? Savannah, is that? Say it. Just say it. Huh? Brown hair, good. And how many do I have? It's right up here. Two out of four.
How do we feel? Good? I want to work on my own? Or can we do one more together? All right, so if you're ready to work on your own, I'm going to cut you loose. You need to do these for every problem. And remember, it's going to be brown and blonde. Everybody else, let's do, what is that, what are we, 12? Right? Are we on 12? You try and do 12, I'll work it out up here. Everybody to pause and think for just a moment. They did not give me any way to fill out this top row. So how do I know what it is? We're looking at number 12. How do I know? What should I put? They didn't give me any blue letters to, to work with. I don't, I don't know anything. How do I know? Dylan, take a stab at it. No, the blue was given. And then I, I filled it in purple. Okay, hey, I know that this, this is given, blue is given. So I know that one has to be purple, or that one has to be a big B. What about this trait is indicative? Lily. Nope, not even that. Is everybody clueless? No. We already have one dominant trait. Can we have more than one dominant trait in a cross? No. No. So that makes this one what? Little B. You can never have more than one dominant trait in a cross. Is everybody else still working with me? Okay. So then I need to do my genotypes first. I make my grocery list and I see that I only have big B, little b. I count one, two, three, four out of four. Big B, little me means heterozygous because they're two different letters. And I'm still using the same phenotypes. So I'm going to have the dominant characteristic, which is brown hair. Sorry, four out of four. Okay, go ahead and do number 13. Corwin. What part? This part? Okay, you have to do the whole thing for every single problem. I'll leave 12 up there, and then I'll work on 13, and if you want to see it, you come see me. How about that? Farther this up. Come see me.
Can you hit stop on the record?